that smoked all your weed, bitch I'm the one that gave you diseases I'm the one that fucked all your friends in I'm the one that crashed up your bands, bitch I had a relationship for about four years on and off but uh, that ended because, dude, relationships are so fucking hard, especially in this town, man. It's like I'm always on the road, on tour, so it's basically a long-distance relationship. L.A. will fuck your head up because there's so many pretty girls out here. Every single day you drive out of your house, you could fall in love with some beautiful girl, but then as soon as you ask a chick, what do you do? If they're like, oh, I'm an actress, you're just like, whoa, uh-oh, I better stay away from this fucking chick. Like, she's fucking crazy. Everyone comes to L.A., including me, to chase this dream of fame and making it and all that shit. So it's kind of a fucking desperation in the air here, and this place is fucked up if you really think about it. You go order some food, the fucking waiter's like, hey man, I'm, I'm a writer, man, if you wouldn't mind checking my shit. You're constantly being hustled. It's like humbling, man. It's like you fucking come out here and you just, you know, you gotta check yourself because you could get, you could get caught up in the scene pretty quick out here. It's a lot of pretty girls partying, fucking all that shit. I think at this point in my life, I've been through enough to kind of know what's real and what's not and separate myself from it, you know? My forefathers drank Goldschlag and my three moms been known to hold the chopper. Showstopper. Really big role would probably be playing Eminem in Scary Movie because that was such a big worldwide movie and people still to this day, you know, recognize me from that. I did a couple of TV shows that were pretty big, like a, a show called Jack and Jill, which was with Jamie Presley and, and Amanda Peet. And that was a big show, but it was kind of just like a WB show that some, you know, women watched. But I'd say biggest, first big, big role would be Scary Movie 3, which led to me doing Scary Movie 4, and I just shot Scary Movie 5. So that was a good thing, because it kept me in that Scary Movie family, and they kept using me. I grew up watching Airplane, Naked Gun, and that's who directed Scary Movie 3, 4, and produced number five. Working with him and Leslie Nielsen and Charlie Sheen, Kevin Hart and Anthony Anderson, and all these comics, and Molly Shannon, and, and all these people that I grew up watching and admiring. I could go do a movie with Jack Nicholson, and to me, it wouldn't be as dope as doing a movie with fucking the people from Airplane. As silly as it sounds, Scary Movie, because they're just silly movies, was the dopest shit I've ever done. I got diarrhea, which is ironic because your mom got syphilis and the AIDS gonorrhea. <laughs> I do open mics in New York, open mics in LA, and that was the gnarliest shit. I remember waking up every morning when I'd have to do stand up and I just had this knot in my stomach, like, oh my God, you gotta stand up there with just a mic and a light in your face and make them laugh. That shit's gnarly. That's the hardest fucking thing you'll ever do. I, I tried it just for fun, like as an exercise, because after doing stand up, shit, you go in an audition for a movie, like, this is nothing, dude. I stood in front of 35 people and, and heard crickets for 20 minutes and bombed. This is nothing. What's cool about like Vine and, and Instagram and Twitter is that you can just kind of do your own jokes and just throw them out there and see what happens without the direct response like of seeing someone in person. You might get a text back like, ha ha, or that sucked, but you're not really getting it 3D in person. It's like cyber reaction, you know? No champagne or girly drinks. We drink beer and beer and beer, beer, beer. No champagne or girly drinks. We drink beer and beer and beer, beer, beer. The rap's been a big part of my life, and I I, uh, I listen to rap since I was a kid. I, I remember listening in fifth grade to Too Short and just being like, oh my God, someone's talking about getting their dick sucked in a Cadillac. This is heaven. I can't believe what I'm hearing. And it was so shocking and dope. And then like Two Live Crew, Ghetto Boys, I remember just hearing the shit. I'm like, oh my God, these motherfuckers are killing it. And now in my life, I've done a song with Two Live Crew. I've done a song with Willie D from the Ghetto Boys. And I just did a song with Too Short. I literally did a song with my three favorite fucking rappers of all time. I could be done rapping tomorrow and I did it. You know what I'm saying? But but I'm not done. I still got an album I just did, which has got Too Short, Andre Legacy, it's got Beardo, it's got Three Loco, it's got my boy Bars Murray. It's straight hip hop shit, you know? Like I, I just love rapping and talking dirty shit. It's just like therapy to me to get up there. and Almost like doing stand up. Like when I get up and do a live show, I'm doing my songs and I'm seeing people smile and laugh in the audience. And then between songs, I go into little comedy routines and it's like I get that bug out of my system of doing stand-up. I just want to make people smile, that's it. There's too much fucking stress in this world, too many people got their problem. And if I could make you smile by a dumb vine in your pocket that you can pull out in your class or at work and have a quick six second laugh, then so be it. Then I did my job, you know what I mean? I think that's, that's why I'm here is to make people smile and once I stop having fun and making people smile, then I lost and I'm done and I'll do something else. But I still have the bug to do that, you know? I still got the itch to perform and make people have a good time. So, 
That's about it. What was that? Uh, oh yeah, baby, that's it. The, the world just got more worse because me, Riff Raff, and Andy got a verse. Check it. Your mom has no